Kepler's third law is one of the great tools that astronomers have to try to understand a, uh, a very important situation in astronomy. We look at some star, we see that it's got a, <clears throat> an unseen companion orbiting around it, and we want to understand what that unseen companion is. So let's take a couple of examples and work through how, how we'd use the law to do this. And just to remind you, Kepler's third law is a, a law that pictures an orbit that would look like this. We've got some kind of an object, a star that we can see, and we'll imagine for the sake of this problem that the star is in the center. And um, something is orbiting around it. We don't know what that is. And in fact, we, we won't see any light from this object. So this is a mystery. And in fact, what's really happening is that both stars are orbiting around a common center. But just for the sake of simplicity, let's uh, just think about the, the unseen object is orbiting around, around uh, a star whose spectrum we can see. We're going to take the spectrum, we're going to be able to measure how long it, the, the star orbits around a common center, so we can see what the period of this thing is. And, and I want to give you a problem. Let's take a problem where um, we can see that this unseen object orbits with a period of uh, 60 days. Okay, And let's say that we can uh, measure, and we can do this through spectra, but we haven't talked about the exact method that's used to do this. but um, we, let's say that we can determine that the, the radius of this orbit is uh, 45 AUs. Okay? So we want to use Kepler's third law and find out what the unseen object is. And of course, the crucial step in this is that if we can determine the mass of that unseen object, that's going to solve the problem for us. So let's rem remind ourselves what Kepler's third law is. It says that the, the mass of the star plus the mass of the uh, unknown object, I'll put a question mark for that, is going to be equal to the radius of the orbit cubed divided by the period squared. And we have to remember that this unit has got to be in AUs, this unit has got to be in years. And if we end up with that, we will find that the total mass will be in the units of solar masses. This should be familiar to you. So let's apply it in this situation. First of all, we know that the period is 60 days, but this got to be in years. So we've got to determine how many years P is. P is equal to 60 days, but it's also equal to 60 over 365 years. Um, and if you work that out, that comes out to be 0.1643 years. Okay. So let's go ahead and solve this problem. That means that the mass uh, of the star, mass of the unknown, is going to be equal to uh, um, 45 AUs. It's going to be cubed. We're going to divide by uh, 0.1643, and that's going to be squared. So what do we get when we do this? Well, if you cube 45, you come up with uh, something that's like 91,125. If you square that, you come up with uh, 2.7 times 10 to the minus 3. You divide that whole thing out, and you're going to end up with uh, a number that turns out to be 3.4 10 to the 6th, and we said earlier that that's going to be in solar masses. So if we're looking at a star, and it's got something that's orbiting around it that's 3 million solar masses, we know what that unknown object has got to be. It's got to be a black hole. And that's, in fact, the way we figured, what we, that's the way we've learned what black holes are, where we, we can s detect them even though we don't see them. So if you understand this, let me give you another problem. Uh, suppose we look at a, a star, and we, we determine that that star has a mass of pretty close to 10.7 solar masses. And suppose that we see um, that there's an unknown object orbiting with a radius of uh, two-tenths of an AU. And suppose that we can also determine that the period of that uh, unknown thing, the black hole or whatever it is, or white dwarf or something, is uh, 10 days. Use Kepler's third law and 
determine what the total mass of the system is, and tell me what it is. So that's your assignment. If you succeed in this, uh, you should find out that that uh, unknown object is almost certainly some kind of a planet. Uh, it's got a mass. You'll find that it has a mass. It's too small to really be measured, and um, it's got to be something that's uh, uh, that's like a planet.